Today on Hillbilly Files, we're going to be talking about Elias Hatfield, the fifth son of Devil Anson Levice Hatfield. For the most part, he was far too young to remember or be involved in most of the major feud events. But by early 1898, Elias was around 20 years old. He was tall, nice looking man, wavy black hair, steely blue eyes, intelligent. He was humorous and well liked by pretty much everybody. Even though Elias was liked and good humored, he also was known to have a hair trigger temper. This volatile trait occasionally showed up when he was highly provoked, especially when he thought his family was being mistreated. So right around this same period, a small posse organized by Humphrey Doc Ellis shanghai John Z. Hatfield, Elias's brother. They took him into Pike County. John Z. was impounded at the Pikeville Jail to await trial on old feud charges. On July 30, an Independence Day celebration was organized in Williamson, West Virginia with a full day of social activities, bands, marching troops, all kinds of stuff. Humphrey Doc Ellis, who was a powerful timber man and also the one behind Shanghai and Zanzi, got onto a train headed towards Williamson. The train made a quick stop at Gray's Yard, which I have looked and looked and I really don't know where Gray's Yard is. The closest I can find is about 30 minutes from Williamson called Gray Eagle, but either way, um, so they made a quick stop at Gray's Yard. Doc Ellis, who was a schmoozer and, and somewhat into politics, got off the train and was talking to people. At the same time, Elias had just crossed the river, headed towards Gray's Yard to either pick up his mail or get ice for the bar. So according to eyewitnesses, Elias said, hello, Doc. And Doc looked nervous and said hello back. And then Elias said, do you think you can take me into Pike County as easy as you did my brother? And kind of laughed at him. Long story short, Elias called Doc a SOB. Doc didn't take that very well and said, I'll show you who's an SOB and pulled his gun out. Elias had turned his back at this point and someone shouted out, Elias, watch out. Elias spun around, pulled his gun and shot and his bullet ricocheted off of Doc's wrist, fracturing it, going up through his neck and out the top of his head. And he was dead before he hit the ground. So check these goats out. A lot of people don't know, but goats are pretty common around here. Just loose. <laughs> so cute. Run! Run! As Elias Hatfield was probably only a fraction of a second from being shot and killed, one would think that the plea of self-defense would work, but it didn't. Elias started the altercation by cussing Ellis while holding a Winchester in his hand the judge instructed the jury, properly so, that if they believed that Ellis had instigated the event, they might find that he forfeited his claim of self-defense. And Elias was not helped by the testimony of several witnesses that they had heard him say that if he ever laid eyes on Doc Ellis, one of them would die. One might argue that Elias Hatfield did not go to prison for shooting Doc Ellis, but rather for having a big mouth. The goats are down there again. I should add as a side note, this little, this is a golf course right here. This bridge right here is the only bridge in the entire uh, country that is in two states at one time. It's in West Virginia and Kentucky over the Tug River. <clears throat> it's pretty neat. So 
So this right here is the old train depot. This would have been where the train came into Williamson and where Doc um, Ellis's goal was, you know, to come for the 4th of July celebrations. But the train would have came right here to this depot, which is now City Hall. That building right there. Old Williamson Train Depot. This is a little underpass that goes to the other side of town. Kind of creepy. I don't go in there. <laughs> Pass. You see how beautiful the mountains are. It's fall. But yeah. And it looks like there's a train coming. So the Norfolk and Western Train um, Company hauled mainly coal, but they also did passenger tra trains back then. <clears throat> they don't do that now, but the trains still run through here. And Williamson actually has one of the biggest, had one of the biggest coal train um, depots in the entire country, if not the world. Southern, Norfolk Southern. It's very cool. I think I said Norfolk and Western earlier. My mistake. I try to keep this stuff straight, but I am not a train expert by any means. Though I do love them. Long story short, you know, Doc Ellis' goal was to come into Williamson, get off of this depot alive, and partake in the 4th of July festivities, but he didn't make it. Because his life was cut short by Elias Hatfield. 18 years old. Look at those mountains. This old road right here, brick. So we're in Williamson, West Virginia. A little side note here, this is actually a coal house in Williamson. made completely of coal it actually caught on fire once which is pretty ironic
but that is not why we're here. Another town with smoky mountains. We could use a new one of these. Anyways, July 12th, Elias Hatfield walked into the old courthouse in Williamson. This is actually a reconstructed courthouse. The old one had a clock on it, a big clock tower. Still yet, he walked into the courthouse, hands up, put his pistols down, and turned himself in for the shooting death of Humphrey Doc Ellis. Moving forward, on August 18th, sitting in a jail cell, here in Williamson, Elias Hatfield's brother, Cap, crept through the streets of Williamson by horseback. It's said that he went to the jail cell where Elias was waiting, sitting, I should say, rotting, and tied his pony up to uh, the window bars and broke him out. And from there they fled to Oklahoma Territory. Um, and this is where it gets a little fuzzy. There's about a year unaccounted for at this point. Um, one theory is that Cap stayed with him, and one is that Cap went on to work for a homestead under a different name. Long story short, Elias Hatfield did face the jury and was convicted and sent to Moundsville Penitentiary where he was soon um, given a pardon because he had consumption and apparently three months to live. And Doc Ellis was still in the ground. Interesting little side note, the Mountain Air Hotel is right here, right next to the old courthouse jail. The JFK stayed here along with um, a lot of famous people. It's a beautiful hotel. Just recently it's kind of closed down. We're hoping it reopens but I don't know. My brother and sister love to stay there when they come visit. I hope it opens back up. It will definitely be missed if not. Look how beautiful. So we're right above Mate 1 West Virginia on the way to Sarah Ann, which is where Devil Ant and his family spent the last 15 years of Devil Ant's life. It's also where they're buried. But I wanted to pull over and show you this beauty. King Cole Highway. So after Elias Hatfield turned himself in and was eventually tried, he was sent to Moundsville Penitentiary. The governor soon gave him a pardon because he had consumption, aka TB, and supposedly he had three months to live. He got out and lived his best life, basically, until him and his brother Troy got into another altercation because of their tempers and both died in a shootout in Montgomery, West Virginia over alcohol. But that's a story for another day. So this is actually Devil Amps' homestead where he lived for 15 years until his death. This is also where Elias Hatfield lived for a while. The cemetery is only a couple minutes from Devil Amps' house actually. There's trail riders here. Uh, this is a trail riding designation, of course. Designation.
Uh, we're almost there. So Troy and Elias, who were brothers, were only three years apart. They were really close, like best friends. So it's sort of fitting that they were both killed October 17th, 1911, in a shootout. The guy named, I think, Octavio Jerome, over alcohol distribution. They died within an hour of each other, and they were put on train and brought here to be buried in one grave together. And here they lie. Dev Lance had said many times that he didn't lose any children to the feud. And he was grateful. But when he did lose two, which one for the feud, but it was to the to gun violence. He lost two at once. Troy and Elias... Hatfield. We will do that story another time on the death of Troy and Elias. Uh, it's uh, super interesting too if you like this kind of stuff. This of course is Dev Lance's grave and you can see Elias's and Troy's name right there. So this is where the story ends for Elias Hatfield. Cut down in the prime of his life, married, children, all over with, blink of an eye.